Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, ever since we did those F-16 BVR videos, and uh, some of the F-15 ones too, basically any fighter that's capable of slinging AMRAMs from 50 to 60 miles, there's been a lot of people complaining, you know, they've been flying the Hornet and they don't know how to fight these aircraft. Especially on the server, the Hornets are, you know, pretty much the, the prey that the F-16 and the F-15s love. To hunt just because the Hornet just doesn't have that thrust to weight ratio to throw those AMRAMs as far as the F-15 and the F-16 can do. So I was going to make this video. I'm going to show you guys how to basically fight in a Hornet. You have to accept that the first shot is going to come from them and you're going to be at a disadvantage. And that's you're basically going to try to drag them into uh, a maneuvering, try to bleed off his energy, make him defend a missile, something like that. So the first thing we're going to do, we're at a high altitude because, you know, we're an AMRAM capable aircraft, Fox 3 there, at 30 miles, at 30,000 feet, we're going to defend at 30 miles, that's our MAR. Now his missile coming in at me is definitely going to be more dangerous than what I fired at him. But you have to fire one anyway because you have to send him defensive. You cannot allow him to sit at that high altitude and just shoot down at you. Um, so we fired a 30 miles, one Fox 3, that one's just to, to do that you know defensive thing. And then we dive down, drag the missile, and offset to the left or right. Go cold, because you're going to have to. That missile's going to be dangerous if that guy knows what he's doing. And then it kind of becomes a battle of recommitment. Who can recommit faster than the other one? Put the other guy on the defensive, ruin his situational awareness, that kind of thing. And if this is an interesting topic to you and you actually want to, you know, hear more detail, stick around for the tack view. I'm really going to break this down. And, uh, okay, so we're going to recommit here onto the bandit. He should have been forced to drop his altitude now to defend that AMRAM. I shot at him, and you can see we got him here. Fairly low altitude. And on the deck, uh, the range is going to be, you know, give or take 10 or 15 miles. Now, he's got some altitude here, so it's probably closer to like 12 or 13 miles. And you just have to constantly respect the MAR. If you don't respect the MAR, you're going to get yourself killed. Here we go. We got him locked up. I lost the lock. Come on. He may be changing aspect here. Possibly in a notching situation against me. We'll just wait patiently. We had a decent... Oh, there he is. We can see him contrailing up high. Okay, so we'll push the radar elevation up, lock him up. So he's trying to gain some altitude so he can shoot down at me. And uh, that's obviously smart for him. But we're just going to go back to the same plan as before. Okay, he's probably a little slower now because he's been forced to maneuver. He had to climb again. We're going to Fox 3 to give him something to think about. Bring him back down. I need him on the deck. And then I'm going to kill him when he's down low. There's a second Fox 3 just a little bit closer. And... We're going to defend the same way, aggressively dive to the deck, and go cold. And you can see how for the Hornet, it's very much a a game of patience and dragging that bandit down respecting that mar to make sure he doesn't kill you and uh, just you know prolonging the fight until you can get into a position where you can kill him all right and we're just gonna go cold a little bit more because that is a dangerous amram we just want to be super careful with it And we're going to go ahead and recommit here. He should definitely be lower altitude now. So you can see that missile's off behind me. F-15 spiked dead ahead. There he is, down low. Fox 3, respect the MAR at 10 miles. Turn cold. 
Never, never push inside the mar. Alright, and the only time that you're going to push inside the mar is if you can see that, you know, your bandit's nose is not pointing at you and you feel like you can get a little closer to him and fire one off. Keep in mind that is still risky. He could definitely pull his nose around and get a kill on you. He'll definitely die, but, you know, that's not good enough. You getting killed and him is not what you're aiming for. I can actually see him here. I'm going to try to lock him up. I don't know if you guys can see with the YouTube compression. I see a little dot there. Locked him up. Fox 3. And dive away. Go cold again. Constantly respecting that mar. And splash 1. I think I saw that thing hit. Yep, there's a little smoke trail there. We'll go ahead and recommit. There he is. That is one dead F-15. Alright guys, here we go. Let's do our quick little tack view review. Um, we're going to break down this whole thing and how to survive in the Hornet. Uh, basically, you have to accept the fact that that F-15 is going to have the first dangerous shot. Um, that could very well kill you if you don't respect the Mar. Um, you're going to be at a disadvantage and you have to first even the playing field before you can even try to kill the F-15. Um, obviously, a big part of that is dropping your tank because if you don't do that, you're already dead. And so what you're going to do is pull up to about, remember the MAR at 30,000 feet is approximately 30 miles, okay? So you need to be defensive or cold by 30 miles. So at 45 miles, he fires his first shot at approximately Mach 1.34, and that's a pretty dangerous missile. However, it could have been more dangerous if he was a little bit faster. Um, however, it doesn't matter. This, this thing will still work regardless of the speed. And so you can see we're still closing. Here's another thing. Do not fly low if you have an AMRAM capable aircraft. You know, if you have a platform that can fire AMRAMs and you're flying down low, you're, you're just going to kill yourself. You know, you're not doing yourself any favors. Um, so fly high and uh, get that first AMRAM off at about 30 miles. See this coming in. It's already Mach 2.9. So pretty dangerous. Fire your Fox 3. At 30 miles, this is your MAR, or minimum abort range, then you're going to dive, okay? And you're going to do an aggressive dive. You know, we're not talking about um, a, a shallow defense, you know, like from here you start, you know, offsetting a little, uh, not like that. This, this will get you killed. You need an aggressive downward um, dive straight to the deck. You need to drag this missile into... Uh, dense air especially with the second one that's even closer and you can see at this point he's reaching Mach 1.4 this missile right here is very dangerous Mach 1.4 27 miles right um, and remember that this first missile has no intention of hitting him the only thing it's supposed to do is as you're defending as you're the hornet over here doing your defensive maneuvers you need to throw something at him in the form of a fox 3 so he doesn't just push in and kill you while you're defending Right, you have to give him something to think about, something to, to do while you're doing while you're trying to survive. Right? Um, at this at this mar, the minimum abort range 30 miles, you have to go cold to survive. 
okay, which is what you see me doing here. You're going to go cold, defeat that missile, recommit, okay? And you're looking on your RWR, right? We've talked about this on uh, several videos. If this is your RWR, as soon as that missile comes behind you or something, like let's say it started off in front of you and you do a couple of turns and it ends up over here, um, you've defeated that missile for the most part. It's not foolproof, but most of the time that's how it works. And like it's a good indicator. The point is you don't want to stay cold for too long because if you stay cold for too long and you don't recommit quickly, you give the the offensive to the F-15. So you can see this F-15 having to just see this AMRAM, the 30 mile first AMRAM that I fired. Um, you can see it's already giving this F-15 enough problems that he's over here defending that missile while I'm completely recommitted on my target. Um, now this F-15, what is he doing right? He's getting his altitude back. Getting that altitude back, he has dropped his mock speed in order to do it. Um, it's kind of like, a, I personally would have liked to at least stay mo above Mach 1. Uh, makes sense to try to get your altitude back because now you can see he's in a very advantageous position I'm sitting at Mach 0 0.96 He's actually just a little bit faster than me and the F-15 is going to pick up a lot more speed a lot more quickly And he now has an altitude advantage, right? So double problem for me um, The advantage I have here is I, recomm I recommitted faster than him Which means I've picked him up on radar and I'm already coming in to try to line up my shot He's just looking for me now Okay, so in terms of situational awareness, I'm a little bit ahead. Um, however, he does pick me up in time. And let's look at this Mar. So you see 14 miles. Um, if he was down here at the same altitude as me, if he was down here, um, it would have been 10 miles. You know, right around here would have been the Mar. We would have fired at each other and we would have dipped. But because he's at a higher altitude, He's sitting at about 14,000 feet here. Um, I have to factor that into the MAR, which means I'm going to add a little bit of distance to him. Okay, so for me, the MAR is going to be ballpark 13, 14 miles. Um, I might even go a little bit closer. I might go to 10, but uh, 10 is kind of dangerous if the guy has a little bit of an altitude advantage. So here's the Fox 3. And again, remember, at this point, I'm still not expecting a kill. I'm... I'm closing the range. I'm getting the F-15 to lose the altitude advantage that he has. I want him to lose the speed advantage that he has by constantly making him maneuver against missiles. Okay. And so there's two. I give him two. One, uh, this is very important, actually. I see a lot of people fire two back to back. Um, I fire one at, you can see here, 14.8 miles. And then I wait a couple seconds, I stay recommitted, and I fire a second one at 12 nautical miles. Don't just squeeze off missiles 2 at 14. There's no point in doing that. If he defeats the first one, he's going to defeat the second one. Uh, but these missiles are a little bit more dangerous. This At 14, it's a very meh. And the second missile, it's got potential. Maybe I could get lucky. That's what this is. Um, but the point is, I'm still not too hopeful with these missiles. The entire intention of these is to just bring him down low. Right, which you can see it's doing. It's panicking him. He's aggressively defending, which makes sense. You know, and here he is on the deck. His missile, you can see, very dangerous. I have to go cold for a significant portion of time, and then I'm going to recommit. And it looks like we both recommit at the same time. F-15's got his missile off at about nine miles. Now remember, down here. The MAR is going to be about 10. Okay. And so here's 10. He fires his missile, his Fox 3, and he recommits and fires a second one. Right. Um, the problem here is he's starting to get slow, right? With this constant moving. Um, I'm going to commit within 9, fire my, my, my Fox 3, and I'm going to pull away cold, right? And as I pull away, a little bit cold here maintain it a little bit went cold again just because those missiles were kind of freaking me out but I, I don't think I really I needed to I could have just pulled away from them and so here I decide that um, I can't really go cold any longer without allowing him to just come up behind me so I have to recommit I recommit I pick him up on radar notice the 
notice that I don't fully commit nose on to him. Okay, because we are at 5.6 nautical miles. And as I come around, he enters the gimbal limit of my radar. All right, he, this is my radar. I can see like this, you know, maybe something like this. And I see him out of the edge of my radar. I lock him up, right? And look at this from here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. From here. Right? You can get him on the gimbal or you can use the bore sight. Right? This is the part where I use the bore sight. And so you can pick him up in the gimbal, but if you can visually see him, the bore sight's better. Okay, so this is what I did, and you can see that it's a significant um, direction away. This saves me a lot of potential danger because I'm inside the Mar. I don't want to be head on with the guy, right? Because it's going to take, if you think of the degrees necessary, right now my nose is pointed this way. And in order to achieve cold, I only need maybe this much, right? And imagine if I was nose hot on the bandit, I would need a much larger degree. That would obviously take a much longer time to whip the nose around, which puts me at more risk of his AMRAM hitting me. And so I don't commit fully onto him. And we've seen in videos that AMRAMs are very capable of doing these turns necessary. And usually you don't want to fire AMRAMs like this because, you know, you're forcing the missile to do a large turn right as you fire it. Um, but if you're this close, if you're five miles apart, that AMRAM is going to have plenty of speed. You can sacrifice a little bit of it by forcing it to turn in order to keep yourself alive so you can get the hell out of there. And you can see that AMRAM has plenty of energy and actually impacts the target at a Mach 1.9. Splash 1. Okay. All right, guys, so that's going to be the video for today. Um, I hope that you found it useful. Let me let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Uh, I'll try my best to answer those. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.